There was already lots of excitement and interest in Alfa Romeo's return to Formula One as a effectively works team. But the team has given us a Valentine's Day present, you might say. Some surprise images emerged of the car on track today. And at first it was cool because it's a few spy shots. And you go, ah, oh, there you go, there's an Alfa Romeo on track. But then we looked a little bit closer and we went, wow, there is a lot of detail here and there's some really different things going on to what we've seen on the rest of the grid. So poor Jake Boxall leg was at the McLaren launch earlier today, thought he was done for the day, and he's been dragged into the studio to talk us through this design. JBL, I know exactly where we're going to start, and it's the front <laughs> wing. What on earth is going on with this car? Well, that was my first reaction as well. Um, this is the strangest front wing we've seen of the 2019 regulations so far. Um, obviously, it seems to just be a huge concerted effort to get that outwash back that they lost over the winter with the new regulations. And so you can see this massive cutout section here where there's the elements are just so positioned so low down um, next to this uh, main element flap here. And you see the main plane split into two and then you've got three elements here. And then this, this one is conjoined together. And then you've got the uh, flap adjuster here. And then, yeah, they're positioned very, very low down. And so that's going to be a huge effort to just drive as much airflow outside the front tyre as possible, try and re reclaim that performance and that effect back. But it's the most extreme solution we've seen of this. And you, you sort of wonder now that whether teams are actually going to turn up in testing with something a little bit more like that, whether we've been led up the garden path a little bit with the first couple of designs. Uh, who knows? But yeah, that is quite something. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first time that the F1 teams have waited until the last minute and then really shown their hand. I mean, in the area you were just pointing at there, traditionally we would expect the elements that we can see popping up there to run effectively the full length to the end plate and basically create what you'd consider a full wing. So this, this huge gap that we're focusing on there, so you think that's the aim of that is to have kind of a channel for the air to travel down and then the end plate, which is curved outwards, tries to almost guide the air around the front tyre. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, rather than sort of have elements shaped to hint at the direction the airflow should go, it's just a very blatant attempt to do it. And presumably they're able to do it because they've developed this front wing, they've looked at it in comparison to last year's and think perhaps the downforce between this one and last year's is comparable, even though all of the furniture from this section here has been lost. So presumably they come up with this wing design and thought, you know what, the downforce level is comparable, we're getting more performance further down the car with this. So that's the, this is the route they've decided to go down with. And it's also quite strange to see that big element here because the trend in recent F1 history has been to create as many slots as you can. Yeah. Obviously the teams are limited on how many they can do, but Alpha are effectively here foregoing the opportunity to run some of those slots, to run one big piece as well. Yeah, and that's very, very strange. Again, as you say, they're got a maximum of five slots they can use and it's strange to not see them using those maximum amount and that's sort of there's also this very strange no section as well which is very similar to what McLaren have run uh, over the past couple of seasons what they will run this season um, but yeah this is a very very extreme looking wing um, why they've decided to go with the single flap maybe that's tied into perhaps them running five flaps here and this counts as one or two, maybe it's a technicality in the regulations, we're not entirely sure, but yeah, this, oh, I don't know what to say about it, it's crazy. You mentioned other teams there, and that's why we've pulled up this image that Torosso put out today of their new car on track, and we noticed that there's a similar sort of gap going on, nowhere near as extreme as what we've seen from Alfa Romeo, but we know that Torosso, in their launch images, we talked in our previous video about how there were clearly some bits missing from that front wing at the time and now we've seen an on-track version. Does this suggest that while the Alfa Romeo idea is clearly a bit wacky and a much more extreme interpretation of the rules that they're not perhaps the only team to be looking at a way of creating outwash by having some sort of gap over on this side? No definitely not and we saw something similar with the Renault design as well. It just seems to be a trend now to compress this section as much as possible. If you remember last year that was a vortex tunnel section and so that wasn't outright producing so much downforce as developing a vortex that could be used to create downforce further down the car and that seems to be a similar ethos here just to try and drive as much airflow around the car as possible bring 
a vortex under here, just curl it up and build it up and send it around the outside. So it's compromising a little bit of front end outright downforce performance for better gains further down the car. And yeah, as you say, Tor Torosso have turned up in testing, which, well, for its shakedown with a proper wing now. And that's going down the same path. Uh, McLaren's design as well, that went down a similar path. So there's going to be more, definitely. Let's get back to the Alfa Romeo. There are plenty of other features other than the front of the car that are interesting to look at on this. What else has caught your eye from what we can see looking beyond the Valentine's Day livery? <laughs> so again, uh, Alfa Romeo, or Sauber as it was last year, used this split intake at the top above the driver's head, which is initially a design we saw in 2010 and 2011, which Sauber brought back in 2017, used again last season, but is now broken in, up into uh, four different inlets. And that's the same for this one as well. And so that's just to ensure that there's a much greater sort of disparity almost between getting the cooling into the engine and more control with getting the right airflow into the engine, getting the cooling to the MG UK and uh, the MG UH and other associated components as well, like the battery. Um, we can also see perhaps these little fins on the floor as well, which is something that a couple of teams trialled last season uh, towards the end, which is just to ensure that any vortices produced at the bottom of the floor, also any potential tyre marbles or anything that are being taken off of the tyre don't interrupt the slots on the floor just to ensure that they're working as properly as possible to ensure that the floor is correctly sealed and that the rear tyre isn't producing so much vorticity at the front. Um, and then there's the rear wing as well, that you can see the strakes uh, there on the rear wing and they're, unlike everybody else, sort of curled inward and that is just to manage the trailing vortex off the rear wing and just ensure that that's not producing a, a negative effect to the suction side of the rear wing. So there's all of those little features there, there's also this S duct here at the front which is just ensuring that flow over the top remains attached. So there's a number of key little uh, pieces to the Sal, uh, or to the Alpha rather, uh, still struggling. You won't be the only person <laughs> calling it a Salva this year, I'm sure. They're all struggling with that. But yeah, there's so many interesting little things. And when it comes out of the garage properly uh, in testing on Monday, I think I'll be able to get more of a look at it and hopefully be able to bring back some more information.